Um, so I've, I've, I mean, I'll start from, you know, the top of where, um, we left off. So how many internship years does internal medicine uh, residency require in Canada? It's a, a three-year residency. There isn't really an internship year, but it's a three-year residency. And then you add on two more years, either in internal medicine, or you go to another subspecialty like myself, where I'm doing two more years in nephrology. Um, I think there was a question about course load in Australia and was the training adequate? Uh, course load was heavy. Um, it's going to be heavy wherever you go. Um, it's a lot to learn in four years, regardless of, of like where you are in the world. Um, I think actually probably heavier courses are better because you do need to learn the content. Um, and was my training adequate? I would say yes. Uh, but you, if you do want to come back and write the USMLEs and the Nakoski and this and the everything like that to get into Canada and the States, you do have to do extra studying on top of that. Um, because those are, you know, focused exams on certain things or certain ways of studying for these exams. So that is studying on top of your course load that, that you have in medical school. Um, but it's possible. Um, and I did write, uh, there's a lot of questions about the timing of writing these exams. I wrote all of the exams in my last year of of uh, medical school and, and, and including medical school exams. So it's a, <laughs> it's a hard year, um, but you can do it. Yeah, there was another question. Can you complete the MCTQ one in Nakoski in the last year or must you have completed the degree? So just, yeah, most students actually haven't completed the degree yet. So you are doing that MCCQ one and your Nakoski exam and your USMLEs and you choose, if you choose to do so in that final year of medical school. Jonna, did you do your step one at the end of second year? No, I wrote everything in fourth year. You wrote year. everything in fourth year. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote step one, step two CK, step two CS, Nakoski, and the uh, MCCQE1, um, all in the matter of like nine months. Um, and then you don't actually even need to be grad, you don't even need to have your degree in order to apply for residency too, because you're actually applying to residency in your last year as well, if mm -hmm. you want to match, um, you know, immediately afterwards. So you don't need your degree literally until you start residency um, the following uh, July. So don't worry about that. You can get everything done in, in that time. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there's a couple of questions here about doing electives in Canada. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience, kind of how you improved your chances to match here in yeah. Canada? Yeah. So highly, it, 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 that's probably one of the most important things to do is get exposure, um, kind of back in Canada so that you can get those reference letters. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities to do this. Um, I went at the time, um, I was at university of Sydney. There was a relationship with Toronto, I believe. Um, I didn't actually get that opportunity uh, because it is, uh, there's only a um, certain amount of spots. So other people got that opportunity. So then I went through just the traditional way which is through a website called AFMC. Um, and you can apply to all of the schools across Canada for electives as an IMG. There's different ways for each schools um, or each school. Um, and I, I was able to get an elective at, uh, I did nephrology at the University of Toronto, um, which I always wanted nephrology. So that was great for me. Um, I did uh, in, infectious diseases at Queen's. And I was able to do an emergency medicine rotation um, at Ottawa. Um, and those were like vital for my uh, exposure to Canada and getting those getting those reference letters. Um, and then I also was able to do another elective as well in the States. So I was able to secure an elective at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, um, Minnesota. And that was also extremely vital for all of my applications as well. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to go overseas. So when you think about it, that was four months that I spent away from Australia, um, you know, getting exposure to other things and, um, yeah, they were great experiences. How many, um, clinical experiences did you do in Australia in addition to those four months away? Oh, so Australia, um, what's unique about the program in Australia is, or at least at University of Sydney for me, but I think it's across the board. Uh, the first two years are all booked like booked um, learning, uh, you're in classes for two years um, with, uh, I think we only have like a day a week of clinical exposure, but then the last two years are all rotating through clinical based learning. Um, so you're at the hospital for two years. So, I mean, take 
two years of school minus that four months. And that's what I had in Australia for additional learning. Um, and it was in a breadth of different types of um, clinical areas. I was I, anything from surgery to obs and gyne, uh, psychiatry. Um, you know, you had exposure to everything while you were there. Um, there's a question here. If you were, if you plan to return to Canada after your MD, do you still have to do the internship? So just to clarify that internship year and the RMO years that I discussed is only for the Australian pathway. Um, so in terms of coming back to Canada, you do not have to complete an internship. You're only completing the MCCQ1 exam um, and the NACOSC exam before applying through CARMS to return for your residency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a cost, there was, uh, the, I think the person clarified the cost of an elective in Canada if they were in Australia. Um, so, I mean, you have to fly yourself there and then the accommodation, I think there's a very small fee to apply for an elective, but other than that, like you're, you're covered and you get you, an important piece is that you have insurance, um, that's mm -hmm. covered as well. So you don't have to pay extra for insurance. Mm-hmm. It's a good point. Um, this one's a good one for you, John. When do you recommend to start studying for the exams? So you wrote them all in fourth year. When did you start preparing for those exams and kind of how was that process? So I, I am a terrible person to ask because I decided very last minute for myself that I was going to go for it. I was humming and hawing thinking, that maybe I wasn't going to do it. So I studied only for a few months ahead of time. Um, the recommendation would be to study for like six months ahead of time, at least. Um, there is a there is so much content out there on how to study for these exams um, that are it's life changing, especially um, the USMLEs. So the USMLEs have amazing textbooks out there the, the, the first aid for the USMLE is in an incredible textbook. And then there's also this massive data bank of questions, like thousands of questions that you go through that are um, integral to, you know, being able to pass these steps. And you got to go through it twice um, in order to kind of do well on these exams. And, and so whatever you can do with your time and get that stuff done, then you can do it. So like when I studied just for a little while ahead of time, I was doing it day in and day out. It would have been a lot smarter if I had started a little bit earlier. Um, but of note, when you study for the USMLEs, you're also studying for the Canadian exams. Um, these, so the exams, they cross over on each other. Um, so when you're studying for the MCCQE1 for Canada, you're also studying for the USMLE Step 2 CK. Um, so a lot of the content crosses over. So that's why it's possible to do all of these exams at once. And not only that, but you're also in medical school. So you're also learning this content in medical school. Good advice. Um, do you need to do an internal medicine residency before your cardiology residency, or can you apply directly into cardiology for all three options? So um, I'll speak to Canada and the States. So Canada and the States, no, you cannot go straight into cardiology. You must go through internal medicine. Um, you have to go through three years of internal medicine training in order to do a large uh, breadth of subspecialties, uh, nephrology, cardiology, um, gastroenterology, infectious diseases, rheumatology, hematology, um, uh, respirology, um, even some critical care as well. You can't go directly into critical care in Canada. So it is a really kind of like the first step for a lot of subspecialties in Canada, but it's only three years. And then you, you only add on two years after that. In comparison, um, Australia is actually even more prolonged, uh, than that. It's kind of a more stepwise approach, but it gives you more opportunity to have more exposure early on. So in Canada, you're kind of hunkering down. You've picked a specialty right away. In Australia, you've got your internship year where you rotate through everything from surgery to medicine. And then you go into these, um, I didn't go through all of this, but I have friends that have gone into it, but all of these other kind of, um, registrar roles where you're, um, uh, still quite general, um, and it isn't until you're a few years in that you that you actually kind of start hunkering down and subspecializing. Um, so it gives you a lot more opportunity to get exposure to things. Um, 
but I don't actually, you don't actually, there isn't such thing as an internal medicine program in Australia. Um, it, it all has very different names. Uh, internal medicine doesn't exist, but it's a different form of kind of preparing you before you subspecialize. And there's a few questions coming in about kind of partnerships between programs um, and all of that. So I just kind of want to go over that a little bit because um, I know we mentioned a few universities there that prefer, you know, um, you doing your clinicals in Australia. So I will say that all of our universities that offer medical programs, all 11 that we work with, there are opportunities to do rotations here in Canada or in the States or elsewhere. I know Macquarie University was mentioned um, in third year, all of Macquarie students actually do a core rotation in India. Um, but all of them do allow you to have to choose Canada or the US or wherever for an option. Some of them have more opportunities in Australia. Um, and it just kind of depends what you're looking for. You don't actually have to come to Canada if you don't want to. It just depends on what your end goal is. Um, but all of them do have that option. Some a few more opportunities for international placements than others. So if that's kind of, you know, going into if that's a big factor for you in choosing university, let your student advisors know. Um, the more that they know about what your preferences are, the better that they can help you figure out which might be the best fit for you. Um, how common is it? There's a question here. How common is it for students to do electives um, in the States or in Canada coming from Australia? Doing them in Canada was relatively common. Um, there's quite a like good op amount of opportunities for people to do that. I think maybe one of the things that changes in people when they go to Australia is um, a lot of people end up, you know, being very comfortable with being in Australia and then they don't seek out those opportunities. So yeah, a large proportion of people who were Canadian that were, were in my program didn't do electives, but that's because they didn't want to do electives and they didn't seek it out. Those who were very set on coming back to Canada, such as myself and looked for those opportunities, we found those opportunities. Um, the States, what I did was a lot more rare. Um, I only know like a couple people who tried to do that up those that that type of approach. the The states is a lot less regulated. Um, so there's not really a central like elective finding system like the AFMC. You kind of have to just like reach out to different programs and say, like, hey, like, hi, I want to come here. Um, and usually they'll say yes. I mean, like it's, there's not many reasons as to why they would say no. Um, the one thing though, is that uh, they really do want you to have your first step um, done before you come and do an elective with them. So you have to kind of triage your step if you want to go and do your USMLE step is what I'm talking about, um, the exam, um, before you think that you're going to have that opportunity to go to the States. Otherwise they won't accept. So I know we're a little bit over time here. Um, there's a few questions coming in about the timeline here. So how much time was there between graduating medical school in Australia and then beginning residency back in Canada? Yeah, so um, I defer. So one of the other cool, cool things that I was able to do at the University of Sydney is they allowed me to defer my graduation for four months or sorry, four weeks so that I could do my Mayo Clinic rotation. So I actually added four weeks onto my education um, so that I could still be under the insurance, uh, policy, um, instead of just going and doing four weeks and having to pay my insurance. Um, so I actually deferred my graduation from what would have been December to January. Um, and then I started my residency in July. So July 1st is the start of residency. So I actually had like five months there of not being kind of affiliated, but that's all, that's all the interview time. Um, you find out that you match in March or April. So then you have May and June to live your best life before <laughs> starting to be a doctor. Yeah. Before, yeah, before it starts in July. So yeah, the Australian internship starts in January and the North American residency starts in, in July of each year. So, um, and most students are graduating in November, November-ish, depending on when your convocation is. Um, but yeah, November so not, mm -hmm. not a ton of time, not a ton of time in between medical school and residency. Um, okay, so I know we are over time. So I will just kind of end it here. If there is anything else you want to say, Jana, feel free. Do you have any lasting advice for anybody? <laughs> um, I mean, 
if this is in your heart, if you want to be a doctor, um, just do it. Um, you know, it, it, it was a life-changing decision for me. It was nerve wracking. Um, and it was a lot of work, but it was very worth it. And I love where I'm at now. Um, and going through such a hard like time of like studying for all of those exams actually made me a better doctor today. I truly believe that. Like I still carry the knowledge that I had when I wrote all of those exams with me. Um, so I think it's actually a really great way to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. You're such a, an awesome success story. Um, and the knowledge that you provided doing all of those exams to us and, and future graduates is, is so impressive um, and very, very much appreciated. So thank you very much for joining. Um, we really appreciate your expertise. Thank you for having me. And if anyone ever, if you can, if anyone has any questions and they email you, you can send it off to me and I'm happy to answer. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, I will. Um, I will pop the email in the chat here. It's uh, medicine at oztrek.com. And I'll also pop mine in as well. If you have any specific questions uh, following this one, it's just Sarah at oztrek.com. Um, so yeah, I know there were a few questions about MCATs, um, finances, all of the extras that go along with actually starting medical school in Australia. So if you have any questions about the beginning of the process, always feel free to reach out to Austrek. Um, and like I said, we will be doing another one of these webinars over the next few months. So take a look at your inbox. Austrek sends all the opportunities and all that we have in order for you to gain knowledge about studying in Australia. So um, with that, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And special thank you to Dr. Jonna Collins for joining us. And I hope everyone has a really great rest of your evening. Bye guys. Bye now.